That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. And for today's Daily Dose of Stupid, everybody is freaking out over a representative from Kentucky, Thomas Massey, who wanted to call for a roll call vote the other day for the $2 trillion stimulus package, which I believe was incredibly stupid, both on the part of the American people and we'll get into some specific people that were dealing with this. So first of all, Representative Massey. The guy is a member of the Freedom Caucus. He's a constitutionalist. He always, you know, basically filters everything through the question of, okay, is this constitutional? So he wanted a roll call vote on the stimulus package because based on what he was hearing, they were not going to call for roll call, which A, he wanted some accountability, people to actually be on the roll as having voted either in favor of it or against it. The second part of that, because this is where putting on my parliamentarian hat is actually helpful. The fact that I'm a, a certified parliamentarian. Uh, so the way that that works is you need this thing called quorum, which means you have a certain number, the organization actually decides the number themselves of people that are the minimum amount of people gathered to conduct business. Now, the reason this is important is because it, it keeps people from, for example, it keeps them from getting to the point to where they could just have a handful of members that they know were going to vote for something that they want and just getting those people together, even though they're a tiny percentage of the overall organization and just pass stuff. And it's now a part of the organization, or in this case, a part of law without a majority or even a, a plurality of the body being gathered together to constitute a quorum to exercise that business and to be able to do it. So it, it, that's what it's trying to prevent. And what you have when there is an absence of significant opposition to a bill is you have a vote count called general consent. So the way a general consent vote counts is basically you go, okay, uh, we're going to go ahead and vote on, you know, bill X or whatever is there any opposition to this bill? And then nobody calls it, okay, then by general consent it passes because there were no objections to the bill passing. So this is the sneaky way that they were going to try to get around that. What they were trying to do is with a number that they knew full well was not would not be quorum, in other words, would not be the number that they would need to get to to be able to pass the bill, they were going to do that, and then in conjunction with what's called a general consent vote, to where they were just going to say, hey, is anybody opposed to it? No, okay, good, we're going to go ahead and pass it, bang gavel, everybody go home. So there's a, there's a pretty big reason why there's constitutional uh, problems with that. First of all, when it comes to Thomas Massey and, and his rationale behind all of this, it's important to note, because the media kind of forgot about this when they were reporting the story, is that he announced this days before, not just to his colleagues, but also publicly on Twitter, that he was going to call for a roll call vote. So it's not like in the last second, right before the meeting started, he's like, oh, and by the way, I'm going to be calling to see if there's quorum here or not. No, he did this way beforehand, actually two or three days before this took place, which would have been plenty of time for them to make sure that they had quorum to vote on this thing. And if you don't have quorum, you have time to gather a quorum. That doesn't automatically kill the bill. But what they did was they waited until the last second, knowing that Thomas Massey was going to do this, and just straight up said, well, we're going to ignore it. Now, they had three or four days to gather a quorum and to actually have a roll call vote. They just refused to do it. And to illustrate why this is a fair criticism, remember that 96 out of the 100 senators showed up in order to pass this thing. They got quorum and got it by a wide, wide margin. And that's another thing that we that people seem to forget when they were talking about this, and there were a lot of people that were mad at me for even defending the guy, uh, that this is in the Constitution. It's not as though this is something that he just pulled out of nowhere. It's not as though this was a parliamentary trick that he sort of, you know, bubbled up in the 11th hour. It's not like this is a filibuster or something. This is something that has been in our Constitution since the very beginning. So you'll look here. This is from Article 1, Section 5. Each house shall be the judge of elections, returns, and qualifications of its own members, 
and a majority of each shall constitute a quorum to do business. So you have to have 50% plus one to equal a majority, and they basically just refuse to do this, even though it's in the Constitution. What they passed was illegal. And Thomas Massey actually had a conversation with the House parliamentarian about this, and he said, uh, so I'm going to call for a roll call vote. They're probably going to ignore me, so I'm going to call to check if we have quorum, which each member of the House of Representatives has a right to do that. And, you know, if, if they doubt that there's a quorum, they should do that, regardless of what the bill is that they're talking about. So he called for quorum, and basically the Speaker looked around and said, yeah, there's a quorum here, knowing good and well there was not a quorum there. And I think the number is actually 218 now, that if memory serves. So the basically, they, they didn't check. The check took two seconds because Massey actually laid out exactly what happened. The speaker stood up there, you know, um, either Nancy Pelosi or her representative. I'm not sure whether it was her or whether it was someone else taking the duties of the chair while she was doing this. But looked around, said, yep, quorum here. And there is no check against this somehow. The, the House parliamentarian actually said that according to the rules, basically their observation of whether or not there is a chairman, this is not debatable, you can't have a vote on it, it's absolute. And so they just said that there was a quorum when they knew that there wasn't. And there's a number of reasons why that this is incredibly important, because if this is ignored, the Speaker of the House then becomes the most powerful person in Washington. More powerful than the president, more powerful than the chief justice. The Speaker of the House then can, whenever they want to, if they know that nobody's going to check them on quorum, or they can say that a quorum is established regardless of whether or not a quorum is actually established, is they could have just a whole bunch of representatives that they know are going to vote the way that they want them to, show up, call for a vote by, una or by general consent without anybody objecting to the bill, just say that it passes by general consent, and basically one person can go ahead and pass whatever bill they want. That makes one person effectively as powerful as the entirety of the House of Representatives. And that's not a good place to be. Because the House of Representatives was always supposed to be a representative body. It's not an executive body. That's why we have an executive branch. But if this is the new standard, if the Speaker of the House now can determine that there is quorum with no blowback whatsoever, regardless of whether there's a quorum or not, Nancy Pelosi can pass just about whatever she wants to. And that's why this is so incredibly dangerous, especially when you consider the thing that they passed using this process was the single largest spending bill in American history. And if you combine the $2 trillion that they agreed to spend on here and the $4 trillion that they're going to use to bail out the banks, that's a total of $6 trillion. That's larger than our annual budget. We just spent more than our annual budget, which is already putting us in debt, by the way, which we're already spending more money every single year than we take in from taxes. We just spent more than that in one day. I get that it's an emergency. I get that we had to do something. I, I get that this is an important thing to do. But you really want not only that to take place, but you want it to take place by using a process that was unconstitutional. If a member of the Supreme Court were to take this up, and I know that that would take a really long time, but theoretically, if a, constitution, if a member of the Supreme Court were to take this up, they would say, no, that stimulus bill is unconstitutional. It doesn't pass constitutional muster because they did not establish quorum before they did so. It's important that you follow the rules, even more important in an emergency than normal. Because in an emergency, governments tend to take and seize power, and they tend to not give it back. That if they can do this, then, especially on something that is the largest spending bill in American history then Nancy Pelosi can pass pretty much whatever she wants to without the consent of the rest of the House of Representatives. That ought to be a thought that terrifies everybody. Studies show that YouTube videos featuring attractive women get far more likes and subscriptions than ones that don't. This is especially true if she's exotic looking. 
Luckily, in the modern era, there's an easy way to work around this. You see, I identify as a very attractive Hispanic woman, so now you have to like this video and subscribe to my channel, otherwise you're just an evil, heartless Nazi that hates brave, liberated, beautiful Latina women like me. Checkmate, woke brigade.